hepatotoxicity is fairly common with the checkpoint inhibitor therapies, and it's particularly common with the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab. Probably 20% of patients develop some sort of grade three uh, toxicity. And it's an interesting toxicity. It's probably an immune reaction against hepatocytes that's going on. And it's usually not associated with any, any symptoms. So patients may get this toxicity only picked up because of laboratory tests being done. And for that reason, um, we tend to check LFTs, either um, AST or ALT weekly in our patients who are getting combination immune therapy so that we could pick it up early and uh, potentially prevent ourselves from giving a dose that might turn a moderate toxicity into a really severe toxicity. And when we see transaminases starting to go up in patients with combination therapy, we tend to hold the dose to see whether it's going to go up further before we decide whether it's safe to proceed. And only if things start to come down or stabilize would we proceed with the next dose. In patients where their transaminases are continuing to elevate, we're often very grateful that we held the dose and didn't add extra fuel to that particular fire. But Kelly, you want to just talk a little bit about what our approach is to um, managing patients with either um, minimal hepatotoxicity and then all the way up to severe toxicity? Sure. So for mild hepatotoxicity, so grade one, we generally have patients um, avoid alcohol and Tylenol. Patients should be avoiding that up front when they start immunotherapy, but we encourage them to um, hold off on those medications or to avoid extra toxicity for the liver. We will increase our frequency of monitoring if there starts to trend up more, more significantly. Um, for grade two LFTs, we would actually draw the LFTs again, probably three or four days later, to make sure we're catching an early uptrend if it's gonna happen. And of course, holding therapy if that does happen. The patients with grade three or higher toxicity, we would start them immediately on um, oral steroids, sometimes intravenous if their levels are elevating higher. Um, if they don't respond to the steroids, we would get hepatology involved and add another immunosuppressant such as mycophenolate to better control their toxicity. These patients are monitored very closely to ensure that they're responding well to the immunosuppression and um, not having worsening liver toxicity. And because the effects of the immune therapy last a long time, we often have to slowly taper them off the steroids over four to six weeks sometimes. And sometimes as we taper, we see the transaminases coming up again or some other immune reaction developing. And come to think about this as when we're giving immune therapy, we're hyperactivating the patient's immune system. And when patients start getting some of these organ toxicities, it's because their immune system is so activated it starts to attack themselves. And when we give immunosuppressive drugs, we're not actually immunosuppressing the patient, we're just bringing their hyperactivated immune system down to a less activated level. And so even as we taper them off the steroids, we might see other evidence of immune-related um, uh, toxicities developing, such as a skin rash or joint pain or something of that sort. So you have to be very careful as you're tapering the steroids that other problems aren't developing. And because these patients aren't immunosuppressed, we rarely see, I can't think of a single case where we've seen an opportunistic infection in our patients, despite being sometimes for many months on immunosuppressive agents. And as another point, which is I think really important to keep in mind, is if patients are on immune therapy and develop um, um, progressive disease and then let's say are switched to another treatment that may have some degree of hepatotoxicity, sometimes that might actually be exacerbated by the previous immune therapy. And we've seen this a number of times in patients who's had, had disease progression on an anti-PD-1 and then went to a BRAF MEK inhibitor and developed liver function test abnormalities. 
And the approach is not really to stop the BRAF MEK inhibitors, but to add steroids and to treat it like it's an immune therapy toxicity. And we've been able to do that in many patients and control their liver function test abnormalities and continue them on a reasonable dose of their BRAF MEK inhibitors. So something else to keep in mind. We can see hepatotoxicity with immunotherapies, either as a single agent or in combination immunotherapy with nivolumab and ipilimumab. This can affect about 25% of patients and varies in severity from mild elevation to significant elevation of their transaminases. This is usually picked up on routine blood work. Um, we do get liver function tests at each clinic visit. Um, more frequently for combination therapy, we do it every week in the first 12 weeks of treatment. If patients do have symptoms, it would be sometimes nausea or abdominal discomfort, but typically they're asymptomatic, which is why it's very important to monitor liver function tests at each visit.